Yo, what is good? It is Zay back with another video, and what we're going to go ahead and do today is something a little bit different than I normally do. What we're going to talk about today is how to find your personal style. Now, over the last few years, my style has changed drastically. I slowly started to kind of figure out my rhythm and what is like my truest form of self-expression through fashion. So today I'm going to give you guys 10 easy tips to follow on how you guys can find and develop your own personal style. Now, I want to say disclaimer, these tips worked really well for me but maybe you might skip a few steps or maybe you might find your own steps along the way these are just some things that were helpful for me and hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes because there are certain tips in there that i wish i knew before i got started on my fashion journey all right so let's go ahead and start off with tip number one inspiration we'd be a fool to say that we aren't constantly drawing inspiration from other people for our fashion for our visual arts for our music taste for even sports that we play all these different mediums of self-expression we are constantly inspired by other people and taking little tips and tricks from them in hopes that we can find some sort of self-expression for ourselves that is authentic to our own identity. This is why inspiration is the first step in finding your personal style. And what's the best way of doing this? Exposure. Look around you. What are other people wearing? What draws your eye? What are ways that people dress that inspire you that you might want to kind of steal for yourself? Maybe give it a shot. Maybe you guys saw how someone dressed on Instagram or TikTok or maybe Reels or any form of social media. Draw inspiration from that and do not feel like a fraud with this tip. You guys have no idea how much people are influenced by other people. This is okay. And like I said, the end goal is to find something that is authentic to you. But first, what catches your eye? Okay, tip number two, try on clothes. This sounds like it probably shouldn't actually be a tip for you guys, but seriously, try on some clothes. You already drew inspiration from other people. You think that these clothes look really cool and aesthetically pleasing to these people, but if you don't try on the clothes, you might not understand what actually fits you or what suits your body type. The only way for you to actually start finding your personal style is actually wearing the clothes and seeing how it drapes on you. That doesn't mean you actually have to buy the clothes. Seriously, just go window shopping. Maybe just take a day trip to the mall or maybe some high-end designer clothes if you're interested in that and just try it on. See how it looks on you. What looks good on someone else may not look great with you. That's something that I found heavily with my body type. And this leads me to tip number three, dress to your proportions. I cannot stress how important this rule is and I did not follow this rule for the very longest time and my fashion took a big L because of it. Depending on your height, whether you're tall, whether you're medium size, whether you're on the shorter side, your height and as well as the length of your torso or the length of your legs affects how you look in clothes. For example, me at 5'7", I roughly have the same length of torso as I do with the legs. So pretty long torso, a little bit shorter legs. If I consistently wear baggy pants and then an oversized long top, it will make me look a lot shorter than I actually am. I'm literally drowning in the clothes, but if I maybe crop up that shirt a little bit and maybe wear the pants a little bit more higher waisted, it makes me look a lot taller and it suits my proportions nicely. Obviously, this is trial and error, so if you guys are a little bit confused about this, please refer back to tip number two. Try on some more clothes, see what works well for you, and please do not think you guys need to buy these clothes immediately after you guys try them on. Get a feel for it and take your measurements once you guys find your staple pieces. These measurements you will always refer back to when buying new clothes. I especially look at how long an article of clothing is if I go on to Grailed or if I go buy something off the Essence sale, I'm figuring out the exact measurements and relating that to a piece that I already have that fits me well. Trust me, this is a game changer. You guys need to figure out your measurements and dress to your proportions. Next up, color theory. Color theory, I'm an art teacher. I could talk about color theory all day long. 
but let's go ahead and just talk about the basics. We got the color wheel, and the color wheel is arranged of all the colors on the spectrum, and there are 12 colors on it. The key color combinations that I'm going to be sharing with you guys look aesthetically pleasing in visual arts and it will translate over into your fashion sense as well. The first one we have is monochromatic. Mono meaning one, chrome meaning color, so monochromatic means tints and shades of one single color. Maybe think about when you guys are dressing with color, how you can kind of simplify it and have just the consistency of one color throughout. Now some people may think that this is a little bit too matchy-matchy, so then we can go ahead and move on to the next. We got complementary colors. Complementary colors are opposite of each other on the color wheel. A lot of advertisement uses complementary colors, sports teams colors, and you might also see them in movies and TV shows that you kind of binge watch on a daily basis. Easy complementary colors would be like red and green, or blue and orange, or yellow and purple. These are easy complementary colors and the reason why they work really well together is because they have high contrast going into it. If you want to go a little bit more crazy with it, you could think about doing analogous colors like matching warm colors together or cool colors or a combination of warm and cool colors. Analogous colors are usually about three to five different colors that are neighboring each other on the color wheel. Think about it as an analogy, right? You're comparing similar things Analogous, they're colors that are similar to one another. And the last one you guys can think about is triadic colors. And we want to think about if we're looking at the color wheel, there are three colors that are evenly spaced apart on the color wheel. Three colors to a scheme and three colors in between. Now I'm telling you guys all of this and these are if you are really wanting to explore the use of a bunch of different colors. But to be honest, I think the easiest thing that anyone can tell you is when in doubt, stick to neutrals. I always stick to black, whites, and grays, and any kind of form of brown, whether it be like a tan, or a beige, or an off-white, these are simple things that you can purchase, and they will automatically always look good together, I swear. Next up, find your staple pieces. These are the foundations of your wardrobe. These should be timeless pieces that you can easily stack and build upon with other clothes in the future. Think about the staple pieces as maybe one set of baggy pants, or if you're still into skinny jeans, I still have skinny jeans, maybe a pair of skinny jeans as well. Add a few crop tees if you're into that kind of thing like me, or maybe if you wanna go the oversized route, think about the shoes that you like to wear, whether you're a sneaker guy, or whether you're a boot guy, or maybe even a combination of both. Think about the foundation that you can use as kind of like a uniform baseline for each of your outfits. Tip number six, build on your essentials. This tip is super important because you're slowly going to start finding ways to kind of fully develop your outfit. This can come along in the terms of accessories. Maybe you want to get a nice baseball cap or a beanie or some rings or maybe a chain as well. Throw in a fancy belt and maybe you could start developing what your personal style will look like to you. Don't think too heavily about getting like loud pieces. Think about am I going to wear this more than a handful of times every single month. If you're looking at an item and think that this is maybe only for a special occasion, this is not for this tip. You need to find a hoodie or a coat or maybe a jacket that you could really add on and enhance your outfits from that baseline staple pieces that you already have collected. Tip number seven, buy slow. We've all been there. I've been there. I've been down the rabbit hole of just mindless consuming, 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 and just buying way too many clothes at an excessively fast rate. Please do not do this. Be thoughtful about what you are purchasing. And remember, if you are looking at something online, whether it be Grailed, or whether it be Depop, or whether it be the Essence sale or the Mr. Porter sale, anywhere online, make sure you guys are referring back to tip number three. You need to dress to your proportions and you need to understand your measurements. Always check for the measurements to see that these items are going to fit you well and be something that is going to be in your wardrobe for a very long time and not collecting dust in your closet. I swear I went on a huge selling spree because I had an insane wardrobe, an insane wardrobe of a bunch of stuff that I just never wore at all. I took so many L's on selling these clothes please do not make the same mistake as I did. 
If you guys already are into fashion, you might honestly be making this mistake as we speak. Try to get better, because clothing is not the end game. You need to think about maybe your future, whether you want to put money in a Roth IRA or whether you want to save up for a house. Clothes should not be the number one priority, and I'm still learning this, so we're learning together. Next up, focus on quality over quantity. Now, I'm not saying this for, let's say, building the staple pieces, because I love to shop at Uniglo for some of my staple pieces. I've talked in a previous video about the Uniglo Airism oversized cropped women's t-shirt, and I love those tees. You could still think about maybe purchasing some clothes on the low, but for the most part, what I want you guys to think about is the quality of the material. Is it worth the money? If you're buying from Target, if you're buying from H&M, if you're buying from all these fast fashion companies, you are one, supporting sweatshop workers, two, it's not environmentally sustainable for the world that we're living in, but I get it. Sometimes you can't afford nicer clothes, nor you wanna maybe even spend $100 on one article of clothing. I knew that when I first spent $100 on an article of clothing, it was like, ooh, ooh, that's, that hurt. But now I'm slowly starting to think about maybe $300 is a good deal on a designer article of clothing. Now, if you're on a budget, I'm not saying you guys need to go out and buy retail for all these designer clothes, but think about the quality of the material. How long is it going to last? I was down the rabbit hole of buying a lot of clothes from ASOS when I was in college, and I mean, they didn't last like a year. I got a lot of wares out of those articles of clothing, but the quality of the material is lacking. Think about buying things that will last, that you will treasure, and that you will take care of as well. Tip number nine, find your statement pieces. This is where you can get a little bit more crazy with it. You guys already found your staple pieces, you built on those essentials, and now, have fun with it. Maybe get something louder, maybe get something that has really interesting details or how it was cut. Man, this is where you guys can have a lot of fun with this. And this leads me to tip number 10, experimentation. As a human being, we are constantly evolving and changing how we perceive the world with each experiences that we have. If our minds work like this, our style will always be evolving with time. Do not be afraid to experiment with new different clothes that maybe you're a little bit intimidated of trying. I used to always wear skinny jeans. I would have never thought in a million years that now I am super into baggy clothes, specifically pants. I also thought I would have never been into wearing cropped shirts or cropped anything for that matter. With a little bit of experimentation, you'll find things that maybe suit you better when you really thought you would never even look good in those pieces. I'll say this in visual arts, and I'll say this with any form of self-expression, you should always be experimenting and trying to develop and kind of fine tune. Keep on experimenting and your style will never become stagnant. All right, and that's it. And those are my 10 easy tips for you all to find and develop your own personal style. If you guys like this video, please go ahead and like and subscribe or give me a follow on Instagram at The Art of Zay and go ahead and leave a comment if you guys like this style of video or what you might want to see next. I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.